I want to talk today about the compelling case for a smart activist interventionist industrial strategy, something that the TUC believes is urgently needed if we're going to achieve real economic rebalancing, deliver prosperity for all, and uh, support a more sustainable future. Uh, I think that we've got a real opportunity here to build a new national consensus in favour of active industrial policy and to build a broad alliance of champions to deliver it. Lord Heseltine's report, No Stone Unturned, provides a strong foundation to build on, and along with the government and the CBI, the TUC has welcomed his report. Many of the recommendations for a national growth strategy with targets, for a national growth council, for industry councils between government and sectors, and for a more sensible approach to procurement are ones that the TUC strongly supports. We also welcome the report's call for more shock for law experience to shape policy, and that's why we want to see trade union representation on the boards of local economic partnerships, partnerships local enterprise partnerships, and on the proposed national and industry councils. <coughs> Now we want to see the government take that hessel time agenda forward. Unions will be following closely what happens between now and the spring when the government publishes its formal response. And we hope that we, along with other stakeholders, will be given the chance to contribute to that process. In the meantime, one thing is for sure. The Growth Implementation Committee, chaired by the Chancellor, mustn't fall into the trap of thinking that deregulation will somehow deliver growth. Britain's long-running problems of low investment and low productivity can't be blamed on workers having the right to be safe at work, nor does the fault lie with employers' obligations to consult on large-scale redundancies and give workers and their unions enough time to come up with feasible alternatives that can protect jobs and modernise plants for the future. No, it's clear that we need a very different approach, a bold, active, coherent industrial policy that nurtures a strong manufacturing base, that helps us uh, meet our carbon reduction targets, and above all, that generates good, skilled, well-paying jobs in the cities and regions of Britain that need them most. Now that may sound like a big ask, but in this post-crash age with widespread recognition that we need to move away from financial and property speculation, we have a genuine opportunity to transform our economy and governments of any hue can and must play an active role. To quote uh, President Obama's former chief of staff, never allow a crisis to go to waste. These are opportunities to do big things. And with that in mind, I just want to make three very brief points. Firstly, we need a smart, active state to take the lead. When it comes to industrial policy, we can't rely on market incentives alone to deliver the balanced growth we want to see. As someone whose name escapes me once said, we need to intervene before breakfast, dinner and tea. <laughs> Over the past 30 years, let's be honest, industrial policy became a dirty word. The market was free to call the shots and we basically bet the house on the city. The results were catastrophic a lopsided economy, regional inequality, that British disease of short-termism and underinvestment. Under the last government, the publication of New Industry, New Jobs um, signalled a shift away from industrial policy neglect. And by the way, we also saw a renewal of some of those essential skills within the civil service in the business department that are also an essential ingredient of industrial policy success. But if there's one statistic that shows how dysfunctional our economy had become, then it's this. At the end of the boom in 2007, 
UK banks invested 16 times more in buying derivatives from each other than in the whole of British manufacturing. Mm. The scale of the economic transition we now need uh, makes dem demands a radical alternative to the free market orthodoxies that got us into this mess in the first place. And if we're going to turn rhetoric about the march of the makers into practical reality, we've got to ignore those tired old cliches about the state not being able to pick winners. A chronic case of uh, low self-esteem and risk aversion, which frankly, as my predecessor noticed, if that had been applied to the Olympics, it would have guaranteed failure. Let's remember that the success of everything from iPads to Google didn't originate with private sector risk-taking, nor even with a creative approach to paying tax, but with a US government-funded investment in internet and communications technology. So to my second point, we need to develop a whole ecosystem to support and develop British industry in a way that supports the whole nation. There are a couple of things that struck me, uh, that really struck me, from a recent visit to Berlin, and there are one or two uh, colleagues in the room who were there too. The first was that industrial strategy was led from the front by Angela Merkel. And the second, was that there was a clear vision shared by government, business and unions about where the economy needed to be in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years time. That allowed everyone, business, banks and workers, to plan, to invest and to play their part. So active support for industry must be fully aligned and integrated with ambitious policies covering skills, the regions, public procurement, R&D, and science, and backed by a new state investment bank to provide finance where it's needed most, a measure that's now supported by three quarters of all manufacturers in this country too. And as in Germany, a new industrial policy must be green. The task of economic renewal uh, must be linked to the wider challenge of fighting climate change, but that does demand long-term policy certainty. The TUC's aim is simple, to minimize the pain and maximize the gain of the industrial restructuring that inevitably lies ahead, delivering a just and fair transition to a low-carbon economy. We believe that the countries which will prosper in decades to come won't be the energy inefficient dinosaurs of the past, but those who invest in the sustainable growth technologies and <coughs> industries of tomorrow. And whether it's electric cars, renewables, retrofitting, uh, building insulation, or carbon capture and storage technologies, if we take the right decisions now, the environmentally friendly industries of the future can be a huge source of growth, jobs, and prosperity. And that takes me to my third and final point. We need to learn best practice elsewhere, recognizing that many of our competitive countries have prospered by being involved. In different ways, there's plenty that we can learn from the Scandinavian nations, from France, from Japan, South Korea, and even the United States. All have a lot to teach us when it comes to industrial policy. As the TUC argued in our German lessons report last spring, while the German industrial model can't be copied wholesale here, there's still an awful lot we can learn and apply from the German approach. It's high levels of R&D, it's world-class vocational education system, it's pride in manufacturing and engineering, <coughs> It's confidence in state institutions and state intervention, including in the KFW State Investment Bank, and its tradition of giving workers a strong collective voice through co-determination, something that the TUC believes is fundamental to a better economy and a better way to work, be that through German-style representation on boards or uh, consultation and negotiation. <coughs> 
After all, as shares uh, change hands at the flick of a switch, who else has a stronger interest in the long-term strategy and success of a company than the workers whose livelihoods depend on it? So that's a quick run around uh, of the TUC's thinking on industrial policy, whether it's smart state intervention, <coughs> learning best practice from overseas, or modernizing corporate governance, we believe there's a lot we can do to improve our industrial performance. If we're going to break free from that stranglehold of uh, the destructive embrace of financial capitalism and unlock investment into the real economy, if we're going to cut our emissions and green our economy, if we're going to create the good, skilled jobs that young people in particular from Birmingham to Belfast are crying out for, then now is the time for fresh thinking and a new national consensus. Thank you very much indeed.